Tanaka Malo Lele, and welcome to Talk Business. And if you haven't guessed already, yes, we're taking you to the friendly islands of Tonga. Talk Business hopped onto a plane and took a trip to Tonga's most beautiful island, Vavao. We're here to bring you the story that holds true to most Pacific Island countries, coconuts. Talk Business will show you how farmers here are working closely with the country's largest virgin coconut oil producer and just how literal the concept of zero waste can get. They say life is either a daring adventure or simply nothing at all. And when it comes to risk taking, Ian Jones is a man who swears by this. After all, the Tasmanian has lived life on the edge, literally. Accustomed to the suit, this attire is all entirely new. You see, not long ago, Ian was a big shot in the corporate world of <laughs> life took on a horrific twist. A few years ago I was in Christchurch on a particular day when there was an earthquake and uh, I was very fortunate to uh, just miss being in a building where uh, a colleague of mine was uh, killed and another one was badly injured and uh, fortunately for me I went to lunch and I wasn't there and uh, as a result of that experience I decided to have a complete change of, of lifestyle and uh, get out of corporate life and uh, go to the islands and do something different. So here, here I am in Vavau and doing something completely different to what I used to do. Here in the tropics, options are limited to mostly agriculture, manufacturing or tourism. But he didn't have to look too far and soon realised that there was huge potential in processing coconuts. Back in the 1950s, Vavau had a thriving corporate industry, but as world market prices fell, so did too the interest by farmers to continue the trade. This has left many plantations idle with tree-bearing coconuts. So Ian came up with the brilliant idea of venturing out into virgin coconut oil instead. His company, Taste of Tonga, can produce up to 4,000 litres of VCO a month. Researched it through uh, the Philippines predominantly. We found a lot of information on how to do it from the Philippines and uh, we duplicated that at a very small level. And since then we've now scaled it up to a point where we can produce about 4,000 litres a month comfortably. But for Ian Jones, his VCO production is much more than business. He realised that coconuts engaged many people at the grassroots level, which meant he was making a real difference in the life of Tongans here. And all over the island there are children that go out after school picking up coconuts, there's parents that go out picking coconuts up, there's the vanilla growers, everybody can participate. Anyone who can bend over and literally reach down and pick up a coconut off the ground can earn some money. Lakshman is a true testament to that. Coconuts in his plantation were prone to rot until he became a supplier to Taste of Tonga. Originally from Fiji, he has lived in Tonga for 21 years now. So I got the one company to buy the coconuts. So then I says, all right, I got some money for them. I pay my boys to working. So he's cover me. That's why then I collect sometimes the 800 coconuts in the, my vanilla inside. Lakshman is also a vanilla grower and sells coconuts to meet the cost of labour. With 240 acres of land in which he grows vanilla, there's a bounty of coconut trees. Sometimes I can make 400, sometimes 600, depends on how much coconut I give it. Many children here are growing up in the greens of the coconut plantations. This means collecting coconuts 
has become a way of life. Loasi Halaliku comes from a family with a rich history to the copper trade. Her family were producing copper back in the days. She now supplies coconuts to Taste of Tonga on a weekly basis. About my family, not only my family but other people's family in the village, uh, the people they were so happy because they come and uh, collect the coconut and give it to me so I give them the money and then I take that coconuts to Ian, Taste of Tonga and then um, I get the money from Ian. She also engages people from nearby villages and helps them to put food on the table. The money from this company helps my family, not only my family, but other people in the, the village, like the kids, the school kids, the primary schools, as well as the, the, the boys and girls in the colleges, as well as the youth. Also the parents, they receive money from this company, from um, selling me the coconuts. Jack Kalaliku is also on the receiving end. He supplies around 2,000 coconuts a week and has witnessed firsthand how his family and the lives of others around him have improved through this venture. When we sell the coconuts to Ian, we get the money to support the family and also uh, help us to, to, to take some more people to work in the vanilla. And also um, uh, some of the families, almost all of the families in the village, they, uh, when they collect the coconuts, and they, it's a uh, good money for the family. The people here, poor people, they collect the coconut in one week and then drop in Friday so they get the money. So from so Monday and Tuesday, start from the boys to going to school and get the food money and going to school, what they need, books, or what you want to buy. This is exactly why Tonga's Agriculture Ministry is supporting businesses like this. Not only is it making a contribution to the local economy, but farmers too are able to tend to a crop they're all too familiar with. It is something uh, people know very well. I mean, you know the nature of coconut. It is a long-term crop and uh, it can survive on uh, many climatic uh, changes. And this is something very good for us. So we have to, with the market coming up and with the health uh, uh, benefits uh, now getting known on uh, virgin coconut oil, for example. So the interest on coconut is increasing. With the steady supply of coconuts received weekly, Taste of Tonga can process around 3,000 coconuts in a day to make virgin coconut oil. On an average day, we have truckloads of, uh, you know, two to three truckloads of coconuts coming in. And what's happening is each, each of the village they create collection centres where the farmers bring in their coconuts to one point. Then between them, they hire a, a large truck and bring them down here and we count them off and pay them the money at the gate. The shelling room is where we take the coconut that's already been taken out of the husk and we use a deshelling machine to take the hard outer skin off the coconut to leave us with the pure coconut in the middle. Once we've extracted the coconut it'll be sorted by the boys into good coconut ready for further processing and for coconut that's rejected that will be put into the pig food.
once we take the coconut out of the shell, we then split the coconut to release the water. The water is then collected and goes down a drain into a drum that we used later to mix in with the pig food. Also at this point is the first stage of quality control to make sure that the coconut is uh, acceptable to go further on in the processing. Behind me is the grinding machine and that grinds up the coconut that we cut in the other room and shreds it up into uh, desiccated coconut effect. It takes the ground coconut, squeezes it through an auger and releases the coconut cream and you'll see the cream come out beside me here. The cream is then used to extract the virgin coconut oil from. So once we've extracted the coconut cream from the coconut flakes, we then pour it into a fermentation tank. It will stay in the tank now for 24 to 48 hours, depending on the temperature, where over time, natural fermentation will cause the water and the oil to separate. What we'll be left with is a layer of protein on the top, oil underneath, and then the waste water below. So after 24 hours in the fermentation tank, the oil will separate from the coconut cream. And what you will see is there will be a layer of protein that will form on the top with the virgin coconut oil underneath. So after filtering the oil and prior to shipment, we will test the oil for moisture content. The way we do that is we take a sample of oil and we put it in this little pressure chamber. Once it's in the chamber, we then mix it with two chemicals. This will cause a chemical reaction between any moisture in the oil. Now moisture is water, or H2O. The chemical reaction will cause the release of hydrogen. As the hydrogen comes out, it builds up pressure inside the chamber, and it will give us a reading on the scale, telling us exactly what the moisture content is. It's moisture in oil that makes it go rancid. So by being able to test it, we can make sure that our oil is dry enough before shipment so that we know that we have a long shelf life for our oil once it reaches the end user. And now it's ready for export. The European Union funded Increasing Agricultural Commodity Trade or IACT project has helped Taste of Tonga get off the ground and scale the business to a size commercially viable to operate. IACT has also provided technical support to help the business understand the mechanics of virgin coconut oil production. Without that we wouldn't be able to have uh, half the equipment that we've got and our production would be back at a very low level that was not very effective. Now with, the, with that assistance, both the financial assistance and the technical assistance, We've been able to develop a business that is sustainable, profitable and uh, is a business that I hope will become uh, something that people will look at from all around the Pacific and aim to duplicate. I've been able to also set the factory up in such a way that it is not running out of a tin shed like so many other factories do here in the uh, Pacific. And value adding to his range of products is what IACT and even the Agriculture Ministry is endorsing. It's to promote uh, agro-processing like uh, Jones Industries is doing, uh, the production of virgin coconut oil. And we know that the market out there is very big and I think us in the Pacific we can uh, uh, have this synergy in our marketing and supply the market out there. So it's our job here 
to make sure that there is enough supply of the raw material, the coconut, to supply our market. Taste of Tonga is now in the process of getting organic as well as fair trade certification on their range of virgin coconut oil products. This simply means Ian can charge top dollar for his products and pass on the extra returns to farmers too. We're able to claim a higher price when we sell and as a result we're able to pay the farmer a higher price. Um, you know, we see this is, it's a partnership between us and the farmers. Uh, we have to win, we have to be profitable, otherwise we disappear and they lose. But we have to also respect that they're the ones doing the hard work. They're out in the bush doing the work, finding the coconuts, getting it to us. We're just running a little bit of equipment here, which is the easy part of the process. And by working with the farmers, we can strengthen the whole community because every dollar that we bring into this community through export is a dollar that wasn't coming in here two years ago. It's the kind of success story that the European Union is hoping to duplicate across the Pacific through its IAC project. Stories of struggle, perseverance and financial empowerment is what ultimately makes a difference and has a multiplier effect across the communities. Through this project, uh, we are supporting 45 private enterprises in the region and throughout the region to uh, achieve a status that will allow them to penetrate overseas markets and therefore to continue to expand. But uh, of course, this has an impact not only on the enterprise itself, not only on the company itself, but also on all the producers that will sell their produce to the enterprises. So an impact on poverty reduction and uh, uh, development. Taste of Tonga is a unique business venture. It's not the coconuts, nor the virgin oil that's distinct, but the processes involved. So what's so special about it? Well, Ian has a firm zero waste philosophy in every aspect of the business. And he's very serious in ensuring absolutely nothing goes to waste. Let's start with the coconuts. Now, once the coconuts are husked, it goes back to the farmers to enrich their soil for the vanilla plantations. Now to the shell of the coconuts. Ian hopes to use these to produce steam in an engine boiler that will in turn run a turbine to produce electricity. That project will soon get off the ground. In the meantime, water from inside the coconuts is collected here and that gets mixed in with the flakes of the coconut once the cream has been extracted. This becomes part of pig food. Protein from the coconut during the fermentation process is also extracted and that gets added to the pig food too. Ian also uses this mixture of pig food to grow maggots or baby flies, which is good food for the chickens. Now let's get back to the pigs. This is where it gets a little different and dirty. Ian will soon embark on another zero waste project that will use pig stool or waste to create methane gas. He hopes to put the pig stool into a biogas digester to make methane gas to produce heat. This will be used to make taro and cassava chips and the pillings of the root crops are expected to go back into the pig food. Now water from the biogas meal becomes fertilizer for the vegetable gardens. Waste from the vegetable garden will also go back into the chicken pan and pig food. Now all the pigs that Ian raises on his farm for sale are part of the zero waste concept too. 
He intends to use pig guts from the smolter and use it as food for mud crabs that live in the mango swamps nearby. He sells the mud crabs to restaurants on the condition they return the shells, which he will then grind up to put in the chicken food as a calcium supplement. So basically, you start with a coconut and you end up with absolutely no waste, but a series of products for exports or import substitution to use locally. This is all part of his master plan to pass on the knowledge of zero waste in production. Then I want to make it um, open source knowledge. That I, I want to design a book that explains the whole process and invite anybody from around the world or around the Pacific to come and stay here, stay in a little farley on the property. They, they work, we feed them, we teach them and they can stay here for a month or two months and work in the business and understand it fully so they can go back to their own island or their own country and try and duplicate the process and, and spread the word of zero waste. Because there's too, we, as a race of people, the humans are not particularly good at using everything. We let a lot of things go to waste and we lose a lot of economic value um, that should otherwise be captured if we just think about the process a bit. With coconuts making a comeback on Vava'u, a replanting program is necessary to ensure the sustainability of the industry. In 10 years time most of the trees here will be on, will be beyond productive status uh, and 20 years time they'll all be dead. So somewhere in the next 10 years there has to be a replanting program but the local farmers, you know, why, why replant a coconut when it's not worth anything to them? So. The only way we can fix that is by creating a, an industry and a market and a demand for coconut oil and coconut related products. And if we do that, then there will be motivation and incentive for farmers to go back and replant their plantations with young coconut trees. For the EU funded IAC project, it's also about sustainability and ensuring businesses like Taste of Tonga and people here in the Pacific are empowered to make a difference in their own lives. Well, it is important because our main objective uh, is to reduce poverty. Uh, reduced poverty requires uh, um, a healthy economy, an economy that can sustain itself. Particularly in the Pacific, uh, the local markets, the domestic markets, uh, are very often too small for enterprises to thrive. However, there is a wealth of potential in overseas markets that will allow enterprises to thrive. And that's our show for this week. We'd love to hear from you, so do send us an email, talkbusiness at fijitv.com.fj. Remember, you can catch me on the net on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page. And if you're on Twitter, follow me at Rachana Fiji TV. Thank you for joining us. Do join us again at the same time next week when we'll bring you another episode from Tonga. Until then, have a productive week.